Hello everybody and welcome back to another video and today we are going to be looking at the cap box from Hack the Box. This was an easy box and we're going to dissect the path to an RCE right now, right here today. So let's jump into it. First things first, we are actually going to start with our Nmap scan. Now, Hack the Box gives you an IP address and we first need to make sense of what that IP address is. What is it? What is running on it? Uh, what kind of services are there that we could interact with? And for that we're going to use Nmap. Uh, and first of all I'm going to define a target, so this is going to be a variable here that I set and that's going to be the IP address of the box. I like to use it in this way so that I don't always have to remember the IP address. But with that set we can start our Nmap scan, so it's going to be a sudo Nmap dash p dash and that means that I'm going to scan all the ports that are available which is over 65,000, 62,000. Uh, so a lot of ports <laughs> anyways. Uh, we're going to scan all of them and I'm going to define dash t4 which means that Nmap can use quite a lot of speed here. t1 is very slow, t5 is the fastest. Uh, I'm also going to define the dash capital A uh, flag here. And that's going to make sure that uh, Nmap is going to perform OS detection, service detection, trace routes, all of that kind of cool stuff. Lastly, I'm also going to set it to verbose so we can see the results as they pop up. And then all I have to do is define my target here. I'm going to start running that. And we should pretty quickly start seeing some results here. And right there at the bottom, you can see that port 21 was found. Port 80 was found and port 22 was found. Port 21 being FTP most likely, port 80 obviously, obviously HTTP, and then port 22 will be SSH most likely. Alright, let's start off by looking at port 80 while this Nmap scan is still running. And at port 80, I've already opened it here, we have this dashboard um, with some security events, failed login attempts, port scans, but these seem to be quite static. We have a username up top here, Nathan, and these all don't seem to work. So all of these buttons, they don't actually work. Uh, besides that, on the left here, we have this dashboard where we have a network status, and if I click on that, uh, it looks like it's outputting the, the result from a, um, a netstat command. So I guess that's interesting, and here we can also see that those were the ports that were open. Uh, besides that, we have this IP config part here, where we see, well, the output of the IP config command, or IF config, I guess. Um, and then we have this security snapshot, 5 seconds snap, uh, PCAP plus analysis, and it looks to hang the server for 5 seconds and then return something to us. Uh, we see 8 packets here, and we see up top that this URL uh, contains 2 as the data here, or the, the URL is slash data slash 2. What if I execute this again? Will we get a different result here? Now it's gone up to 3 up top there. Okay, that's interesting. Still these 8 packets. Um, so yeah, this seems to be like an incremental counter up there. So every user that runs this security snapshot uh, gets a new ID and the ID is incremented by one. Um, and an ID is an identifier. And this is somewhere where IDORs can occur. So IDORs, the ID there is that uh, there is not enough access control and we can access, for example, in this case, the um, security snapshot of different users. Now, obviously, there could have been users before us, but also user users after us. So we'll want to fuzz that out, find out for which of these URLs we actually get a positive result. So let's try that out. And to do that, I am going to use FF. So our MAP scan is finished in the meanwhile, but let's just go ahead and run our FF. And for that, we're going to have to supply a word list. But currently, we don't really have a word list. We need a word list that contains numbers. So a sequence of numbers from 0 to 10,000. And for that, we can use the SEQ, the SEC command standing for sequence. And we can define the start to be 0 and then make a word list of 10,000. And I'm going to put that in the file numbers. And now if I do a head of numbers, you will see that this contains 
numbers counting from 0 to 10,000. All right, now we can execute our ff command. So first faster u full, we're going to run that with the word list numbers. So it's going to run uh, something for every number. And for every number in that word list, it's going to make a request to the URL. And here I'm going to define HTTP. Then I can use my target uh, variable again. And then uh, that was slash data and then slash the number. And I'm going to write first there in capitals. And that means that FF is going to use this as the place to inject things from the word list. So, okay, with that ready, I can run it. And I see a lot of results. So I'm immediately going to stop it because there's no use in that. And what I immediately see is that we have pretty much every number being returned to us with a 302 status. Um, that's quite strange. And, and to make sense of this, I'm going to look at one of the numbers that I know will return something positive, such as uh, the number 3, because we created that one. Uh, and let's try to find number 3 here. Oh, here it is. Number 3 returns a status of 200. And we can see that all the others return a status of 302. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rerun this ff command, but this time I am going to filter out all of the results that return status code 302. So I'm going to do that with the dash f for filter and then c for status code. And I'm going to filter out 302. And now if I run this again, we see that we get some different results. We get two back. We knew that we created that one. We get three back but we also get zero and one back. So we know that these exist and now we can check out, for example, number zero. So I'm going to go back to the front end here and I'm going to type in uh, slash data slash zero. I'm going to visit that URL. And we can see that we get a certain number of packets and so on, but now we can download this. And this download button is going to uh, download a PCAP file. So I'm going to save this. And now we can assess this pcap file. Now, if you have never heard of a pcap file, it is a file that kind of um, you can create by capturing all the traffic going over a certain interface in your network. So every packet that comes along is being logged and being put in this pcap file. And then afterwards, you can review it, review all the packets in the order that they arrived. And uh, it's commonly used in forensics if you're trying to find out uh, when a network was compromised, for example, all of that kind of stuff. So let's do some very, very basic forensic analysis on this PCAP file. And for that, I'm going to open it in Wireshark. Wireshark is a great utility uh, for this use case. So let's open uh, 0.pcap in Wireshark. And here we see the Wireshark interface and we see all of these packets. So that's a ton of packets, uh, a ton of TCP, then with HTTP running on top of that, obviously. But here we also see FTP running on top of that. Now, these actually aren't that many packets. So how do you analyze this? Well, what I like to do is I like to go into a certain packet and go to follow and then TCP stream. Now, what does that mean? Well, all of these packets, they belong to, or most of these packets belong to a TCP stream. Um, TCP uh, starts with a handshake and it ends with a fin request. So you have uh, a certain stream of packets that belong to each other. Now, if I click this button, you're going to see that we see uh, an HTTP request, for example, here. So what did Wireshark do? It took all of the TCP packets or all of the packets that belong to a certain stream and it just compiled all of them. And then we get this view. And as, in my opinion, it's, a, it's the easiest way to view a PCAP file or to view the contents of, of what, what was transmitted. Uh, and here we see that uh, there was a GET request made to the slash page by this um, IP address. And the server returns something. Then we can use this button at the bottom here to go to other streams. So to go through all of them. And in this case, it was a get request to slash static slash main.css and the CSS was returned. On stream two, we have the favicon.ico that was requested, but that was not actually found. And then on stream three, we see something very interesting because this is not HTTP. This is FTP. And FTP runs over TCP as well, so we can see that stream. And here we can see that the server responded with, hey, I am VSFTPD 3.0.3. And then the user said, I, I'm the user Nathan. The 
the server asked for a password and the user typed in their password bucket hat for me uh, and then the server said login successful now we were able through this IDOR to access this PCAP that we shouldn't have been able to access because there were no proper access controls limiting us from accessing it um, and in that PCAP we actually found some sensitive data and now we can actually try to log in using this password now it will probably work on FTP but I think SSH is more interesting so let's try out SSH at first so to log in with SSH, I'm going to use SSH pass because that allows me to uh, put the input the password in a non-interactive way. You can also just use SSH if you prefer that. So I'm going to enter the password, make sure to put it between single quotes because there's this uh, exclamation point or obviously put a slash in front of it if you use double quotes. Then I'm going to say, okay, with that password, run the command SSH Nathan at, and then we can use our nice target variable that we created earlier. And if I run that, we see that we actually get access to Nathan's account. And in this case, we went from a very, very, very simple IDOR to RCE. Um, and that is the user part of this box. Now, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I hope you learned something new. And I hope to see you next week for another video. As always, if you have any recommendations on labs that you want us to look at, on things that you want us to cover, then comment them down below. If you have any questions, comment them as well, and we will answer them as soon as we can. Uh, but for now, I'll see you next week. Take care, everybody.